Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 0 .90 Beta. In this episode we hope to get Raynan to the surface of the moon and return him safely back to Kerbin. As you can see I've already plotted the translunar injection. Now I do not have it at a complete free return trajectory but we can easily fix that if we need to. So right now if we focus view on the moon you'll be able to see that this is our approach and that's a decent approach by any any estimation and it looks like the far side of the moon is the side that is properly lit so we'll pro probably want to land over there somewhere which is fine since we do have a Kerbal on board the rendezvous with the with the return capsule though will have to happen in communication with Earth because we want the return capsules probe core which is buried under all of this mess, uh, all of the solar panels. We want the probe core to have communication so we can use it to orient that portion properly. Okay, so that is the plan, but we've got to take care of translunar injection first, get into orbit. It looks like we'll have enough delta V to uh, make some kind of orbit around the moon before separating off this stage, which will be handy. And uh, Raynan will have to transfer to the lander can before separation of this bottom stage. Okay, we are turning to the node. I've locked all of the upper tanks, so all we've got is these four RL-10 engines and uh, two extra meters per second because of these little boosters. So here we go. I'm going to use the boosters to settle the engines down. And yep. We'll see how close we get. Okay, uh, we're only partway through the burn right now, but I just noticed something very peculiar. I, I saw here that the aerozine number, the the total amount of aerozine exceeded the capacity, and the total amount of N204 exceeded the capacity. Not by much; it's by 10 units and and nine units respectively. And uh, you can see there is a tank. Uh, when I highlight this, there is a tank with 65.23 out of 53.21. It seems like we have an overcapacity tank. I don't know how this happened. Um, is it these? Yeah, it's these. Uh, with the thrusters on them. I don't know what's up with that. It's, uh... Oh, it's not both of them. Uh-oh. It's just one of them. One of them has... Okay, uh, so we've got four-way symmetry. And three of them are fine. But there's one that has more. That's a really bad situation. That means that this portion will be unbalanced. At least it's not the lander stage, but still. Um, mildly unbalanced. And we'll have to watch out for fuel consumption. We can't get to the point where... We'll have to uh, not use those few units either way. Uh, otherwise, I'd have to. Well, I could feed them into a different tank, I suppose. But yeah, it's a bit complicated. That is weird. I don't remember seeing that before. Okay, we're coming close to the end of this burn, and I don't have 800 meters per second left for the for getting into orbit around the moon. So we'll be in with a high apoapsis around the moon. I think it'll turn out to be, uh, so we've got about 740 meters per second. But anyway, here we're going to manage the rest of this burn. Going a little bit further out before coming back in. I, de I decided to burn out of the descending node, even though I didn't have to, we were at a very low inclination anyway, but... But, uh, yep, went for that instead. We could probably have burned like around here to reach it around here. This is a longer thing. Um, I need to. I'm sure I have enough food, water, and oxygen. That looks like a lot. So that's alright. Okay, now I'll use RCS for the rest, I think. Oh, shoot, I just noticed we're using the capsules HTP as well. I forgot to lock that. Darn it. Uh, yeah, I, uh, well, we can't replace that with anything either. So, uh, let's lock that. 
Okay, well that was not according to plan. Hmm. Okay, so a funny thing happened on the way to the moon. I actually had a power outage. Uh, we, we are still on our translunar injection and I'm just correcting this course again. So in the middle of correcting this course with RCS, I lost power for like just five seconds. And uh, interestingly, it had, it had some weird effects. And I'll show you that in a moment after I finish this. Actually, I'll show it to you now. Uh, remember how I had display windows all over the place? Uh, custom displays that I had set in MechJeb? Those custom displays are gone. Somehow, my power outage caused MechJeb to not have those configurations here or here. I don't get it. So uh, I'm hoping that it didn't mess up anything more, but if it messed that up, that's, uh, that's pretty weird. So other weird things may happen. I'll be on the lookout for that. Uh, otherwise, our resources are exactly what we expect them to be. And everything else seems to be configured right. Smart ASS was not out. Normally, Smart ASS is always out, but Smart ASS was actually um, not visible either, so I had to open it up. So that's curious, very curious. Okay, here we go. We've got our periapsis. We'll make it nice and tight, 58 kilometers. And uh, we'll go from there. All right, we are on our way. We've still got, well, I don't know how much delta V we've got, actually. Um, well, on the way, I'm going to reconfigure my custom windows and bring them back up. And uh, yeah, we still have plenty of RCS fuel here to do the maneuvers. Okay, so I'll see you at the moon. Okay, here we are, and our periapsis is way off. Uh, yeah, that's weird. In full disclosure, I did have to do the the final adjustment to the transfer a third time because actually the custom window editor in MacJeb wasn't working, so I had to reinstall MacJeb and copy these from another install. But uh, yeah, I did the the transfer, the final bit of the transfer, you know, with the RCS one more time. And still got to less than 60 kilometers, but doesn't look like that was very helpful. Okay, um, hmm. Alright, well, I'll have to adjust this. We've also had some boil off. At, uh, at Earth, we had 740 meters per second left. Now we only have 720. This is quite a spaceship we've got here. Yep. And Earth and the Moon right there. Hmm, I don't think we have enough RCS to bring it all the way down. I'll just bring it down as close as possible. I don't want to burden the RL-10s here to get the periapsis down. Well, it looks like all I can do is bring it to 500 kilometers. I want to reserve some fuel for turning. So yeah, I'll stop it at 500 kilometers and then we'll just have to retroburn a periapsis and, and bring down the other side. We were always going to have a high apoapsis, but we're going to have the other side be the periapsis and bring it down to a low level. And then once the lander separates, it'll bring this side back down using its retroburn. Okay, so that'll do the trick. Alright, on to periapsis. Okay, here we go. All edge rockets. And ignition. Alright, lunar orbit insertion underway. I don't think I'm gonna get either side particularly low. It'll probably be ending up as circular orbit around 500 kilometers, I think. Because normally you need about 800 meters per second. We've only got 740, I mean 720 it was after the boil off. So yeah, it'll have to start off from a fairly high orbit. That means our return vehicle will be in a high orbit and the lander is going to have to rendezvous with that. Might be tricky, we'll have to see. Okay, I'm just going to let these engines run out. I'm not going to reserve any and try to deorbit this. 
that would be possible of course it has local control but I think I'm going to use every bit of juice I've got to actually slow this thing down and get into as tight an orbit as possible we are pretty much out of the Arizine and N204 there so that won't be able to deorbit this either if it had been able to, we would have been able to get the periapsis much closer as well. I am going to... well, no, actually the lander cam doesn't need solar panels out just yet. It's got these solar panels anyway. So it'll be fine. It's probably got tons of electric charge stored up. Yes, it does. Okay. So 616, well, uh, going down because we're using up the RCS here as well. So um, about 600 by 500, let's call it. Not great, not great at all. So let's let that run out. A tiny bit of extra oxygen, probably nothing we could have done to solve that. I mean, we're talking about the total load was like, you know, 100,000 hydrogen and 34,000 oxygen. This is an uh, error of about 0.3%. Okay, that's it. Right, alright, so Raynan has to EVA now, transfer into the lander, because the lander has more tons of control than that capsule does. That one has only 5, this one has 20. And only with uh, control from here can Raynan control both bits at the same time. So. Let's go. Head first. Board. Grab. Board. Okay. Now that he's in there, I think if we separate this, it'll be alright. If we don't have control after we separate this, that would be a problem. Let's find out. Well, he's got local control, uh, avionics unlocking control. Okay. All right, um, well, let's unlock some fuel so we can pull ourselves away. All right, everything should be unlocked there. Let's see. Right. We don't want to overuse that. Now, once we get clear, we're going to undock from here. And that portion will be remote. And it's got antennae. It's got plenty of antennae, actually. Are we facing... Yeah, we have communication with Earth at this point. So if it doesn't work out, we'll know immediately. This side should still have local control. Alright, let's undock. Okay, so this side is clearly still in communication and Raynand is here and there's no signal delay is there still control yep okay I should throw all down so it doesn't do that and let's sidestep I think that should sidestep it yeah Hmm. I don't know. We don't seem to be moving away from the other part. Time warp a bit. Okay, now we are. All right, good, good. Okay. Now I was worried for a sec there. Oh wait. Now we're attached. Uh oh. I suspect a glitch here. Let me time up again. Okay. What if I'm really, really far away? Let me drift to out of physics range. <laughs> this could cause an explosion. Let's stop time warp and see what happens.
gosh darn it. <sighs> okay, um, well, I, I've got a quick save, but I don't remember where it was from. Let's see. Ah, uh, no luck. My, my, my quick save is all the way back at Earth before we... We, we've got a translunar injection, we just haven't completed uh, the same point where I've been at for for many times now, where I have, uh, haven't completed the translunar injection, we've still got the RCS part to do. But apparently there is some invisible force connecting these two docking ports that won't let them release. Uh, since this is the quick save, I'm gonna just try and undock now and see what happens. Well, and uh, I've got, let me unlock some RCS here and just see if it can pull away at all. I'm suspecting not. Yeah. In fact, if we try and ignite its own engines and pull away, it's like they're, they've got some gluons connecting the thing. So, yeah, attaching docking ports in the VAB, apparently not a good idea. Alright. Okay, well, so this mission is a bust. It was a good, good mission too, I think I overdid all the Delta V, I think this could have done it. Everything is overdone. I mean, after all, I only have one Kerbal. The last time I tried to launch three of them. I think we can bring bring him back. I guess... I guess what we can do is uh, test re-entry from, from a high orbit. So what we can do is... Yeah, let's use the... I don't know... Uh, to what extent we're still docked to this or not. But it's got it's got some delta V here that it can't use. Um hmm. Yeah, I guess we'll have to use that stage. And we'll we'll get it to a uh, a free return trajectory now. Okay, uh, we're actually going to miss the moon entirely. It's probably the best thing. I don't know if I can get the moon to get us down any closer than this periapsis. The thing is, I was trying to get it closer than this periapsis and uh, we'd have to do something interesting around the moon to do that. Um, yeah, at least uh, I can make the adjustments right now and this, I think this is probably for the best. Uh, if I really wanted a good free return with the moon's help, I'd have to be going like this, not like this. Yeah, we're, we're timing it a little bit wrong for that sort of thing. Okay. Yep. Alright. I think uh, we're going to head out to Apoapsis. We don't really need this portion anymore, so I'm just going to decouple that. Um, actually, the whole thing might be a little bit confusing right now. Oh, don't. Hold on. Let's, we can move forward here. Oh. Well, no, no, it's pretending like it can do it, but it's going to have the... Oh, now it can separate? Huh. That's so weird. So now it can separate, but, but just watch, it's going to smash into it at some point. I don't know. I don't know why it can separate now. Is it something to do with the avionics? Because that now has no avionics. Well, unfortunately, there's nothing we can do to help ourselves get to the moon now. I mean, well, we can do a flyby, but that's about it. We've got a lot of Delta V, actually. But that was all to return from lunar orbit. Theoretically, we could slow down our approach to Earth, but that wouldn't be a very good test of re-entry, since now this has turned into a re-entry test. So we're going to take a quick approach to the Earth, 
and see how reentry works. But this is now the spacecraft for Rena and Kerman. And hopefully we don't smash into the other piece after time warping. Looks like we're pulling away. Okay, here we go, and you can see the moon slipping by as we reach apoapsis here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring the periapsis down, I think, to. Well, what would be safe? We know that the last time wasn't very safe, but we that was because we had to go around twice, wasn't it? I'll go to 70 kilometers. We are actually outfitted with the intention of going around twice, right? We have a single heat shield here and then a heat shield at the bottom of the capsule itself. Uh, have we locked HTP? No. Uh, yes, we have. We have locked HTP. Okay, good. Um, so yeah, and we've got a maneuvering system here. So, in theory, we can do this. We'll see what actually happens. Well, let's say 70, and let's see what happens. Again, uh, we can go around multiple times in theory. In practice, that might be dodgy. Electric charge would probably be the major issue, because once we dump the service module, we don't have solar panels. So we'll only have internal electric charge after that. Now I don't know how descent mode would work when we have a separate tank on the bottom here. It does offset the center of mass, but it doesn't really know. It knows about the capsule, it doesn't know about the rest of the craft. It would offset it maybe not as much? Not sure. One thing we have is plenty of fuel. Again, we could slow down by quite a lot and save Raynan a lot of trouble. But that's not, not the intention right now. We've got some supplies here. We've got to move the supplies up. Our apoapsis is getting a little bit high here. I mean, it's supposed to be around 300,000 kilometers, not 500,000. I think I might bring it in a little bit after all. Alright, I think that's about right. Yeah, okay, that's already lower. Not much Delta V used with our service module on that, so not a problem, I don't think. Didn't Probably won't make much of a difference either way. Okay, so, retrograde, and... I think we can separate the service module now. It looks like three days worth of electric charge, maybe less. How's the charge up here? Charge up there is pretty much full. Okay. So, checking staging. Alright, separation. I'll just manually do it from here. Okay, I don't trust that actually. Let's see what TAC Light Sport says. Uh, two days. Two days of electricity, 13 days of food, water, and oxygen. Uh, our orbital period is seven days and that will be brought down by the atmosphere. Okay, uh, we'll have this tank unlocked so we can reorient as necessary. Um, we don't really need to do that right now. And I probably want fine controls on. Okay, heading into the atmosphere. Failed mission, unfortunately, but uh, at least if we bring him back, that'll be something. Okay, we've got some flame effects. Right now I'm not using descent mode because we're not coming straight down. I expect that we're going to be going around and hitting the atmosphere a second time. So we're just going to skim the atmosphere this time and go flat out against it. We should not be experiencing high g-forces in other words. The whole point of descent mode is to limit the g-forces on re-entry. But I'm not expecting the high g-forces because we're just skimming through and we're not coming down. The high g-forces usually occur at uh, 40 to 50 kilometers altitude. Well, we're not using very much of our fuel to stay oriented properly. That's expected. That fuel was really meant for if we need to adjust our periapsis later on. Uh, when we get back to apoapsis, if we need to mess with our periapsis to keep it safe. That's what that fuel is for, and we probably have more than, I mean, too much. We probably have too much, but again, like I said, every stage in this mission had uh, more than it needed. 
just because of that stupid the coupler uh, docking port that uh, we got messed up and I didn't want to risk it again I mean I, I can't keep repeating the same thing expecting something different in that case when there's a glitch involved if it's out of my control so yeah that's the situation we're going back up and it does look like we're going to remain in orbit as expected we haven't used any ablator at all and it didn't get too hot so this is all very good we'll uh, retain this this maneuvering stage for the next go round and entry attempt okay we're out of the thick of it I'm pointing down a little bit to try and use that to raise my periapsis uh, probably won't work so much not in this thin atmosphere so uh, we'll just do a minor RCS burn at apoapsis to adjust the periapsis. I think the same height should do the trick, more than do the trick in fact. Uh, if we take a look at it, we burn off more than 1,500 meters per second on that uh, on that pass at 70 kilometers, let's say. And doing the same thing again would bring us suborbital. And in fact, uh, going at the same periapsis, we'd actually burn off more because we're spending more time in the atmosphere. So. Yeah, we could probably do even higher than 70 kilometers if we wanted to. Certainly we don't need to go this low. Okay, so that's the plan. Let me take it to Apoapsis and we'll see what happens. Okay, let me take it from here. Let's see. Yeah, I can just keep it on fine controls to boost it up. So the next thing we'll do is I'll probably... What is our alarm clock? Um, we'll probably just follow the Jupiter probe in. I don't feel like doing this... I'll have to come up with a very different configuration if we can't rely on the docking ports to be safe. Well, not that different. I guess we could put a stack separator in between them. But uh, we'll hold off until after the Jupiter probe, the next Jupiter probe uh, attempt. And so that's got to be approaching Jupiter at that point, and we'll see how that goes first. Okay, we are entering the atmosphere. Um, maybe I should try descent mode. But then I have to turn SAS off, I mean the Smart ASS off. Because we want the descent mode to orient our craft appropriately. Okay, here we go. There is a bit of a rocking motion. Not too sure about that. We are tilted in, broadly speaking, the right way, though not as much as I've seen other capsules do it, uh, possibly be possibly because of this little mini service module that we've got here. Could take SAS off and really let it go. Let's see if it does something interesting. Yeah, it's going the wrong way there. Well, uh, let's see. And then flattening out. It doesn't seem to be doing what I want it to do. Okay, I'll take put the SAS back on and tilt up myself. Just so that I, I make it do what I want it to do. We're sort of hovering just short of 2Gs here. Descent mode isn't doing very much. Uh, and really, SAS wouldn't be able to fight against a, a center of mass shift if it was doing something. Uh, considering that we have fine controls on, and really, if you take a look at our Arizine and Intel 4, there's nothing happening there. So if the COM was shifted, uh, it would definitely tilt the capsule. There's no way the SAS would be able to hold it. So I, I guess the COM isn't shifted. We are past 4 Gs, 54 kilometers in altitude. Still need to burn off quite a lot of speed, and most of that will happen right about here, between here and about 40 kilometers. We've only touched the slightest bit of our ablative shielding. And of course we've got two layers. We've got this layer and one below it on the capsule itself, and we haven't had to go to the layer on the capsule itself. The capsule's temperature is mild, negative 10 degrees Celsius. The heat shield is uh, approaching 1,200, though that's a little bit worrying. The tank underneath it is at 36. The all-important parachute, of which we have one, is at negative 4 degrees Celsius, so that's good. 
But we are past 6 G's now. 3,000 meters per second. Right around here we should be at the peak G load. Yep, I think the G meter is going down. Let's see what it hit. Uh, 6.5 G's. Okay, the effects are diminishing. Our Kerbal is over. Well, the South Pacific fairly close to Chile and Peru. Okay, all of the effects are gone. We'll deploy the parachute first and then dump the mini service module. Let's see about the info on the parachute. It's pressure deployment, pretty standard stuff. I think I'm going to arm it. Okay, parachute is armed. Okay, descending through the clouds now. Should be getting parachute deployment uh, relatively soon. There we go. Looking safe. Now, one interesting thing about 1.0.5 I've noticed in KSP uh, stock is that the parachutes, uh, th the whole idea of terminal velocity and the way the parachutes work early on in this phase of descent has changed rather dramatically. And I'm not entirely sure I'm in favor of the change. Uh, I don't know if it's going to carry over into Realism Overhaul 1.0.5, but it's pretty drastic. Um, at this point uh, in stock, the capsule is descending much faster and the parachutes don't slow it down at all. So that's a bit weird. Okay, full parachute deployment. There we go. And now let us dump that service module, which we definitely don't need. Um, we'll just dump the whole thing at one go. Um, yeah, 9.1 meters per second is a bit rough. Let's just dump it. Now it gives us 6.9 meters per second, which is a little bit nicer. I'm unlocking the HTP because I think just in case we are rolling around in the ocean, maybe we can use the thrusters on the capsule to sell ourselves down. So that I can recover it. Sort of an important part to this. Okay, here we go. Oh, it's all settled. Recover. Very good. Well, so my attempt to land a Kerbal on the surface of the moon has once again met with failure, though at least this time we got our Kerbal back. Uh, it could be that the solution is just a matter of a stack separator and we can go again. And if I think that that's what I want to do next, maybe I'll do that in the next episode. But probably I'm going to be curious about how the Jupiter probe works out, so I'll probably do that. So yeah, tune in next time to see what I do. And if that, I'll say thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.